Researchers have just claimed a new breakthrough. They say they can make batteries simply from water. If this is legitimate, well, there's a lot of water on the planet. So this could absolutely change the world, but I have my doubts. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans and I'm coming to you here from Melbourne, Australia. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Great to have you here. Thanks for your support. And we have made more than 800 videos over the last 12 months, really giving you inside information on what's happening globally in the electric vehicle industry, battery industry, and what's going to happen over the next decade. Our Sim Energy has debuted low-cost water-based batteries. Now, this company is actually in the United States, and it says its new water-based battery uses no lithium, no cobalt, no nickel, and it costs half as much as conventional lithium-ion batteries. This company, Alsim Energy, is based in Massachusetts. Sounds legit, but is it? Alsim Energy has been working on next-generation batteries. Recently, Steve Hanley from Clean Technica got an email from a spokesperson from Elsim asking if Clean Technica would be interested in doing a story on the company. Now, this company has just emerged kind of out of nowhere after several years tolling in obscurity. Now, there's one red flag about these new batteries in Massachusetts in the US. It says this. In a press release, unfortunately for IP reasons, the company is not ready to reveal everything they're using in their batteries yet. What I can share with you now is that the batteries use no lithium, no cobalt, no nickel to avoid the problems associated with supply and costs of each of those materials. The cathode is primarily manganese oxide. The anode is a different metal oxide. In addition, the electrolyte is water-based. There are no organic solvents. Currently sourcing mainly from the US, with some suppliers in Europe and Japan. All of the materials used in the battery are inherently non-flammable and non-toxic, making sourcing, manufacturing, application, and end-of-life processes safe and environmentally friendly. Thus, the battery is one, a better solution for marine applications as fleets electrify, and a better solution for two-wheeler applications with poor heat dissipation. The new battery reduces the need for expensive battery management, and cooling systems in electric cars. Now, if this is true, this is absolutely game-changing. From what I'm hearing so far, I've got to say, I'm excited. In a further press release, the company said it's partnering with a leading automaker in India to develop its batteries, and it will provide three gigawatt hours of batteries a year for use in that company's products. Alsim is also in talks with companies in the marine shipping and electric two-wheeler markets to develop similar partnerships. So it seems they're fairly far along in the development process, especially if they're going to be manufacturing three gigawatt hours of these batteries per year. Now here's what the company said. Lithium is inherently flammable, and there are numerous risks that accompany all lithium-based technologies. Now the CEO, Mukesh Chatter, said, the company is on a mission to provide the world with cost-effective energy storage solutions being using advanced, inherently non-flammable battery materials beyond lithium made from non-toxic, readily available source resources to power the growing mobility and stationary storage industries. We're excited to work with industry partners to produce the next generation of batteries and to validate the innovations that will enable widespread access to clean electricity on a global scale. So it sounds good so far, right? Sounds promising, sounds sounds like it could be the real deal. Creeper Varanasi is a mechanical engineering professor at MIT who has spent the past five years working with Elsim. Because he was not focused on batteries in his past endeavors, he told Fast Company that he looked at battery technology with a fresh perspective. In other words, he's coming at this from a new angle that maybe no one else has looked at before. If you learn about batteries, we started exploring other chemistries. If you learn about batteries, you're automatically going in the lithium direction. But we were looking at different metrics. It has to be abundant. It has to be low cost. It has to be easily recyclable. It has to avoid supply chain challenges. As the company started using and testing the new technology, they said, we started seeing lithium-like performance. So what are the details? 
What are the specifics on these batteries? What's the energy density? What's the number of charging cycles? Do they work in cold weather or hot weather? What's the charging speed? What's the discharge rate? Well, there's no answers at present. That is a bit of a red flag, I have to say. However, one thing very interesting about these batteries, Nitin Noria, a former dean of the Harvard Business School, is heading the company's board of business advisors. That seems to give them a little bit of legitimacy that they wouldn't otherwise have. Here's what Noria says. We're seeing global competition to bring new batteries to market. Most companies are focused primarily on performance. They put little thought into also making their batteries safer and more cost effective. Well, I have to disagree with him there because there's lithium ion phosphate battery companies that are putting a lot of effort into making their batteries safer. He goes on, especially for the developing world where consumers are more price sensitive. The team at Elsim Energy is working to ensure that their batteries not only meet performance expectations at a reduced cost, but also avoid most of the supply chain challenges associated with lithium based technologies. Not only are Elfsim batteries sustainable, but the company's business model is sustainable as well. The company says that its batteries will cost less than half of today's lithium-based batteries. That's a big difference. That would make them probably a fair bit cheaper than lithium-ion phosphate batteries. This would help EVs compete on price with conventional cars. In fact, it'd probably make them cheaper. The other benefit, of course, is using non-flammable and non-toxic materials removes many end-of-life concerns associated with lithium-ion batteries that people used to have, making LSIM batteries potentially easier to recycle. Now, that said, yes, we can recycle battery materials now, and it's done for pretty much all EVs. There's a huge industry growing up around that. So recycling is not really a key point of contention with electric vehicle batteries anymore. However, if these batteries don't need all these crucial materials, right? It's possible the batteries could be manufactured anywhere around the world. Now, in addition to that, another incredible claim. Elsim says these batteries can be manufactured in existing lithium ion battery factories with little to no retrofitting required at lower operating cost and without the need for expensive dry rooms, fire locks, and solvent recovery systems. It sounds truly remarkable. Now, beyond vehicles, the company sees its new battery being used for less expensive energy storage, particularly for hundreds of millions of people around the world who still don't have access to electricity. You could connect it with a solar panel, for example, and store the energy to be able to run a fan, light bulbs, have an internet connection, or a small refrigerator. This will change people's lives. So, Jim Hanley says this. Yes, this is new technology. And there are a few technical details available or independent research to support the company's claims. In fact, there's none. But the promise of a low-cost, non-toxic battery that can be manufactured using traditional techniques is very intriguing. It's too soon to declare the era of fossil fuels is over. But it's not too soon to suggest that burning them to power the global economy is one step closer to becoming stuff only found in museums. Now, I expect to hear more about Elsom in the near future. And when I find out more, I'll be sharing it with you. But I'm going to leave you with this. Five red flags. The company has not published any papers in any journals anywhere. Number one. Number two, there is no information about the technology. We know nothing other than the fact that water is used as a solvent. Number three, there are no patents. I see and have been able to find no patents on this battery technology. If it is as groundbreaking as they say, surely a patent would have come about, you would think. Another issue, the name drop person here from Harvard University, he's not a scientist. He's not an engineer. He's not a, he's, he's no one that has any real relevance to the battery industry. Business, yeah, that's important for sure. But we're talking about battery chemistry, new revolutionary chemistries, Name dropping him really doesn't do anything to prove that these batteries either exist or that they can do what the company claims they can do. Is this company just trying to fish for business dollars and investment? Will they then do a runner? I have no idea. But frankly, honestly, I'm inclined to believe that there is something behind these batteries. What it is, I don't know yet. But if they are what this company says, they're game changing. They'll absolutely change the world 
There is zero question about that. And I've got to say, that does get me just a little bit excited. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Legit or not legit? What are your thoughts? Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.